Let's start with a question that, well, hits the bone of every survivalist. What happens when the temperature drops so low, your matches freeze, your lighter cracks, and your breath turns to ice before it hits the air? During the Cold War, soldiers, scientists, and explorers working in the Arctic and Siberian frontiers faced exactly that nightmare. Temperatures that made conventional fire-starting tools useless. Yet they still managed to build roaring fires in blizzards that would kill an unprepared man in minutes. They relied on a method so dependable it didn't need matches, fuel, or modern gear. Only physics, chemistry, and a bit of grit. Today, we're unearthing that forgotten Cold War technique that could keep you alive when fire seems impossible. Stay with me. By the end, you'll not only understand the science behind it, but be able to recreate it yourself, step by step, using simple, field-available materials. The Cold War's Arctic challenge forced innovation beyond flint and steel. During the height of the Cold War, the Arctic wasn't just a frozen wasteland. It was a battleground for intelligence and endurance. American and Soviet units stationed near the poles needed reliable heat sources, not just for cooking or melting ice, but for survival itself. Traditional lighters and matches failed in sub-zero conditions because fuel vapours couldn't form and sulphur tips shattered from the cold. What emerged from this crisis wasn't a gadget, but a rediscovery, a method known among Cold War operatives as the chemical spark, a reaction-based ignition system capable of generating fire, even at 40 below zero. This wasn't something new. It had its roots in 19th century field chemistry, but it was perfected during the Cold War out of necessity. It combined two simple components, oxidizing powder and reactive metal shavings, most commonly potassium permanganate and glycerin. When these two met, a delayed but powerful exothermic reaction occurred, enough heat to ignite tinder even when the air was icy dry. The brilliance lay in its simplicity and availability. Both substances could be carried without special storage, and unlike matches, they didn't fail when wet or frozen. Here's why it worked so well. Potassium permanganate, or KMNO4, is a strong oxidizer. It supplies oxygen in the absence of air. Glycerin, meanwhile, is an organic compound that reacts violently when combined with an oxidizer. When a small amount of glycerin is dropped onto a pile of permanganate crystals, it begins an oxidation reaction that builds heat slowly over 20 to 30 seconds. That delay was key. It gave operatives time to prepare dry tinder or kindling before the flame burst to life. When the temperature plummets, you can uh, warm both substances slightly under your clothing to encourage the reaction. Once combined, the mixture generates enough heat to ignite wood shavings, birch bark or cotton soaked in animal fat. In training manuals of the era, Soviet survival instructors often demonstrated this using snow-covered ground, proving the reaction could overcome even ice-cold surfaces. In practical field conditions, agents or soldiers would grind the permanganate into a fine powder, pile it into a small mound, and add a few drops of glycerin from a small vial or medical kit. Within seconds, white smoke would appear, followed by a purple flame that burned intensely enough to light damp material. For modern survivalists or bushcrafters, this method remains incredibly useful. Both materials are legal, affordable, and found in common supplies. Potassium permanganate can be purchased at most farm supply stores. It's used as a disinfectant or for water treatment and glycerin is sold in pharmacies as a skin moisturiser. Together, they form one of the most dependable chemical fire-starting systems in existence. So, to replicate it safely, follow these steps. 
First, prepare a dry, stable surface, such as a flat rock or, you know, a metal plate. Then, create a small pile, about a teaspoon, of permanganate powder. Next, carve a depression in the top of the pile to catch the glycerin. Add just a few drops, no more than a quarter teaspoon. Step back and wait. Within 30 seconds, you'll see smoke and sparks before the chemical bursts into a small flame. Feed it immediately with dry tinder, like shredded bark, char cloth, or even cotton lint. In survival settings, this same method can be adapted creatively. For example, if you have an old first aid kit, many contain potassium permanganate tablets for disinfecting wounds. Mix one crushed tablet with glycerin from a medical vial and you've got instant ignition. Even antifreeze, which contains glycol, can serve as a substitute fuel in emergencies. It's easy to overlook how vital fire was to Cold War missions in frozen terrain. Soviet radio outposts in the Yamal Peninsula or American early warning stations in Greenland depended on fire not just for warmth, but for operating radios, melting water and preventing frostbite in equipment. Matches and lighters failed, chemical ignition did not. The technique's reliability became so respected that NATO manuals in the late 1950s included variations of it under emergency Arctic fire techniques. The key wasn't just heat, it was control. A soldier could regulate the ignition delay, choosing when the flame appeared by adjusting the surface area or temperature of the chemicals. In covert operations, where visibility mattered, a small, delayed reaction was better than striking sparks. Fire could be created silently, without friction or metal-on-metal -metal noise. What this Cold War innovation teaches us is timeless. Survival favours knowledge over gear. Matches fail, fuel runs out, but chemistry, when understood, remains predictable. Today's outdoor enthusiasts can still pack a small vial of potassium permanganate and glycerin instead of bulky fire kits. It's compact, stable and effective, even in the harshest conditions. Moreover, permanganate's versatility as a disinfectant, antiseptic and water treatment chemical makes it a multi-use addition to any field kit. Testing this method at home should always be done outdoors and on non-flammable surfaces. Once you've seen it work, you'll understand why generations of soldiers trusted it with their lives. This isn't a party trick. It's a proven tool that bridges chemistry, history and survival. A perfect example of how the Cold War's harsh lessons still apply to modern preparedness. If the Cold War taught us anything, it's that nature doesn't forgive ignorance. The ability to start fire without matches isn't nostalgia, it's resilience. By learning and preserving these forgotten methods, we keep alive the hard-earned lessons of those who survived in conditions we can barely imagine. If you found this breakdown valuable and want to keep exploring the lost survival technologies that shaped history, don't forget to subscribe to In the Beginning. Hit that like button and share this with fellow history buffs and survival enthusiasts. The past has plenty more to teach us, especially when the modern world goes cold.